So, <clears throat> okay, so we had some stuff from Seiko here. Uh, since last, okay, we got. So, all right, so I saw we've got the anomaly detection pull request. I think we had some more stuff that needed to be done on this, right? So, let's see. Uh, yeah, last week you asked me to see if I can generate data using uh, a Python function, and I did that. And, yeah. Cool. Uh, I actually uh, tried generating the documentation. I think I was on the wrong uh, page of the tutorial, which is why I think I've run into an error now that somehow messed up my imports. So I think I'm going to need some help. With so that. you ran it, yeah. So you ran into this. Uh, um, yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, this happened to me. The same problem that Chico faced. Uh, I ran into the same problem. I. Uh, I got past it using that skip command. I yeah. skipped over the installation for uh, both of those, auto escalon and uh, the other one. Okay. And <clears throat> yeah, and I thought I had done okay. Um, I'd actually been successful in setting up my dev environment, but uh, somehow that messed up my imports for uh, the entirety of this model. And now I can't <laughs> run any of my test files. Okay. All right. Hmm. Well, we'll have to figure that out then. Um, so let's see. I want to see. All right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just checking to see if their latest release here has um, the pre-built wheels because this is what we ran into. I don't know. You guys remember, remember we had some discussion around this last time. Okay. So it doesn't have pre-built wheels because um, we had some discussion around why we needed these, um, you know, the dependency checking. Um uh, around like Wobble Rabbit and um, something else uh, because they just recently started to, or they released pre built wheels for older versions and then we didn't need it. Um, but it looks like we do still need to do checking for Swig. So I'll just write that down. All right. <clears throat> uh, So, so we're having a dependency issue while running. Uh, uh, right. So I sent a screenshot of the error I'm getting on uh, Gitter. So if it's something you recognize. Okay. This looks like we've installed the... Um, uh, the uh, production version of the FFML, so or like the you know the one from PyPy. So I would yeah, but that's the thing. Um, if I try to uninstall DFFML, like say I do something like pip uninstall DFFML, it yeah. gives me a permissions error. Mm, okay, so how? Let's see. So you want me to present? Maybe, yeah, why don't you present? Yeah, so... and we'll just go through this. Yeah. Just give me a moment.
राइट सो लाइक या सो दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट एरर दैट आई गेट इफ आई डू समथिंग लाइक पिप अनइंस्टॉल डीएफएसएमएल राइट सो uh so it looks like somehow <clears throat> we must have run uh pip install using sudo at some point um so because we got installed to slash user um which is a, a root only only root can write there so you're just going to need to run uninstall with sudo so something like sudo pip install oh, yeah dash y yeah yep Okay, and then you're probably going to want to do Python dash m pip. Okay. Okay, so do uh, all right. So so saying uh, yeah, it's using roots uh, path. So yeah, okay, that looks like there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> so yeah. So now, yeah. There you go. Um. So, yeah. Just make sure not to use sudo. Um. And and then you, you you should be free and clear of that. Um. Right. Yeah. So the only thing I need to do right now is just set it up all again, and I I should be good to go. Right. Yeah. I think I think let's see. So, yeah. You should just have to do the the user. You have to go through and you have to install the main package in development mode again first. Um, let's see. Yeah. And then after you do that, let's see. Intruding. Yeah. I think for setting the environment, uh, there is a page in DFML. Yeah, yeah. Docs. Uh, yeah, uh, that's file. very helpful. Yep. Yeah. And this, this one, right? Okay, cool. Yep, yeah. this is what we want yeah. to look at. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do this. Um, the second thing I want to talk to you about is, uh, I can. I'll stop presenting now. Uh, the second thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, I went through some of the uh, models and checked out their documentation. Um, can I have uh, like local training examples? uh for the documentation like you for the documentation i saw that there were examples and some of them had local files uh do you want see. yeah because um you need to know what the train and test accuracies are for the uh examples right and i can't do that if the data is random um Okay, sorry, I I'm not following what you're saying here. So, you for what for what one specifically? Because they all are done differently, you know. All right. Um. So, say I was giving examples for uh this anomaly detection model. Uh -huh. Would it be okay if I had some if I had like some data like some CSV files, like a couple of CSV files? that sort of oh. <laughs> uh, provide the training and testing data yeah okay um okay so ideally we we don't have that right but if if that's if that's yeah. we we can do that but ideally we don't um right because it's just so yeah like i think we talked about this last time but it just ends up looking like you know you no, have no, to have them no, copy paste no, it in right so or you can have them download yeah, it from a link no. so yeah so um one of the examples had a shell file running um, to generate training and test data would something like that be okay yeah i think uh, let's see where is that example I, i mean the the thing is that that works right now better than it will work in the future when we need to support windows too and we're trying to figure out yash is working on trying to support windows and anytime we have like little bash examples that makes it slightly more difficult um so if you can show me like what you Yeah. Which one uh, I can go to it I'm presenting right now so. Uh all right wait um I have the link open so I'll just show it to you on the laptop.
Uh, right. So this is uh, the XGV regressor model. Yeah. So no, I don't think it was this one. I think it was wait, wait, wait not this one. Just give me a moment. Right. Uh, right. So this is a model uh, for DAL 4PY and um, I went through the examples for this and yeah, so it has shell scripts that help it generate data uh -huh. for uh, examples, something like this. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and this is, so this is, let's see. And actually I'm realizing Delphi probably needs to be included in the, in the list. Um, <clears throat> so we're trying to get away from this um, because we, you know, we have the ability to do the, 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 this um, inline, you know, console test stuff within the documentation and that way we don't have to have it in separate files too. Um, you, you can include, so I, yeah. All right. Well, we just don't want it to look like a giant wall of text is the main thing. Right. So if, cause if, yeah, Absolutely. so we, we can do, we can do, you know, little files. We just want to be, be conscious of, of how it looks and then make sure that it still works when, when we're on this, you yeah. know, the model plugin page. So, yeah, I mean, you can do, yeah, I understand you, what you're saying. Yeah. Not, not a ton of data, just like 20, 30, yeah. like maximum 50 <clears throat> examples and then, 10 yep. to 12 examples to help you test uh, yeah. how it's going. To, right? And then I think the thing is also that you don't, so the way that, um, so so doing it with these the sh files was sort of like the, the way that we had been doing it beforehand. Um, and now that we have, now, now that we can sort of combine things in line with the documentation for the, like in the doc string for the, uh, for the class, I think, did we go over how to, I think there's an example of how to write out a file using the console test stuff, but that's how we would do this. Yeah. Um, uh, it's there in the tutorials. Okay, great. Um, cause yeah, let me just double check here. Um, yeah. Cause we'd want to, we'd want to just write that as a, you know, like the code block and then file and then you put file path. Okay. Yeah. There. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's, I just say, yeah, do it, do it, write, write it out. Um, no, that's fine. Um, ideally, you know, like I said, we have a, some kind of function to generate that, but you know, sometimes that's less clear. So yeah, if you're, if you feel like this is going to be more clear, um, it's, it's, it's really just about making this, uh, it, it, it aesthetically, aesthetically, uh, um, pleasing for the documentation because we don't want to end up with giant yeah. walls of text, right? So yeah, however you want to do that, um, yeah. go for it. All right. Um, did you uh, have a look at my pull request I sent? Uh, I, think I think on Friday. 
Uh, yes, and this is the anomaly detection one, right? It's this guy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and we're talking about these two commits. Um, so I think the main thing was that we haven't moved the... So so you, you trim thing down, things down with the, the data, but we haven't moved... Um, uh, we needed to move the whole model itself into... Let's see, where was that comment? Um, I think maybe, and maybe we just talk about it in the meeting, but basically the DFFML hyphen anomaly or hyphen model hyphen anomaly detection, that directory needs to be uh, removed. And then we need to move um, the file, like the main, the files just into the directory above. Um, Ah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, that was something I wanted to check with you before I did. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember I remember we talked about this in the last meeting, but before I did that, I just wanted to reconfirm that uh, which directory you wanted me to. Oh, here it is. In. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and I think we must have we must have put it up here instead of uh, in the meeting minutes instead of in the pull request. So, um, that makes more sense. Why? Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right. So let's just do that. Um, because that's that's sort of the main thing here. Um, and let me just comment in here. Oops. Yeah, so I'll put it here so that we remember that. Um, because that meeting minutes is not a great place to track that. So, all right. Um, okay. All right, so I added a comment with that. Um, and then other than that, let's see, was there anything else here? Or, oops. Okay. Uh, the where do I put the tests, uh, like uh, the test model file, where do I put that? So let's see, let me go back down here. Oh, damn it. All right. So, where did we go? And I think, okay. Yeah, because you remove those files and then test. Okay, you get the random data generated there. But you wanted to do, we're talking about the documentation for the model now, right? Um, uh, which yeah. we haven't done yet. So that's, that's our last thing. Um, so you're just going to put them, okay, so uh, come on, open. So, all right, so if you look at this page here, um, actually, maybe we can just do, or no, that's not. Yeah, so if you look at the console test, the docs for the console test stuff, um, if you follow um, this example um, here, this is how you write out a file. Um, so let's see. I can't comment on this. All right. Um, Quit filters. Okay. So you're going to look at reference this, um, and then you're going to want something like this for writing out a file. So for writing out a file. Okay. Oops. All right. And so if you have a CSV file, it doesn't quite understand the CSV file formatting. So I would just say, um, you know, so let's see if your file is um, uh, training.csv then this is what it looks like. Um, and then you take your training data, which was, I thought we had some somewhere, yeah, maybe not. Um, well, we have some in those files. Uh, where was the files that were removed? Um, no, no, wrong. All right. Uh, no, we 
we don't have it here anymore. All right. Okay. All right. Well, you, you get the picture. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The CSV data. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. And then the rest of that, I think we talked about how to write um, how to write the console test um, example for what was it? I can't remember which model we did it for last time. I think it might have been the XGBoost uh, classifier. XGB data, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think, and then you so you can reference the um, you know the meeting the meeting recording uh, for that, and then also that commit where we added that. So let's see, uh, X comma Y. And then I'll just put. All right, and then let's see. Yeah, so that. All right. Um, and let's just find that commit so that we have that uh, handy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this would be a good. This is a good uh, example here. Okay, and okay, yeah, so here we did the, um, we downloaded stuff. So you're just going to put, um, you're going to say, talk about, <clears throat> you know, you'll say, create these files, and then you'll do that to uh, to create the file. And we also do, um, we usually put the file name that the user is supposed to write to in bold above it. It's like a little header, so they know what to call the file. All right. Yeah, so that says, okay, uh, training CSV, and then right out to training CSV. All right, cool. Um, yep. So let's see. Dependency issue, uh, what to do about examples. Uh, okay, so. So for test data, uh, just make sure it's not a giant file the user needs to have a paste. Uh, make it reasonably sized. Um, include, uh, or let's see, put, show what to put in files via console test. And that was here. Great. Anything else on that? Uh, no. Just a small issue. Um, I think um, this pull request failed one of the uh, CI tests for, um, for the should I plugin. Should I be worried about that? Uh, no. Um, so that, that one is because this NPM audit, I don't think I've found the, there's an issue that relates to this. Yeah, I, I saw, to... yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, okay. I saw that issue, uh, and I thought it was, it would be best if I ask you for, uh, just for a confirmation on that. Yes. Yes. So, and okay. So yeah. And did you see it by looking at this? Is it? Is that yeah, how you yeah, exactly. Okay, this is cool. the exact issue. Yeah. All right, great. Okay, so that's 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 the idea. I just created this kind CI failing label because there's some things like that where it's like <laughs> it's not your fault. You know, you just want to make sure that um, that it's not. So that's did the right thing there. Um, okay, so yeah, yeah that that has to do with this intermittent issue that they are having with their backend service or something. I'm not yeah, sure what the deal is. Because I only heard like one other ci fail, uh, failing and that was for me not up updating the change log and yeah so yeah so in that yeah i think we're good cool all right um so let's see here i think that yeah that settles that then all right sweet um uh, natesh what did you want to talk about today yeah actually i made a pull request uh to add a support of light GBM model, All right. uh, reg regression and classifier. Basically, it's a, a boosting algorithm that is that was developed by a Microsoft and open source. Okay, cool. So, yeah. And luckily, I found that the uh, the documentation of this is in the form of NumPy, so we can use the make NumPy config in it. All so right, very cool. That's, <laughs> right. that's yeah, that's. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think 
that's that's totally luck i think yeah right yeah i know that was yeah. like we had to spend a while when we first did that and now i'm glad it's been paying off yeah and that's the console test and nice nice the two exa- yeah. very nice yeah. okay yeah you've got this you get this down this is the pattern right yeah you, you figured it, you've you figured it out um yeah all right it's a default configurations yep Let's see. All right, can you put data? Make config number. All right, that's great. Um, Possible question. Okay, and Iris again. Okay. Okay, and you did accuracy with. Let's see, what are we doing accuracy with? Mean squared error. All right. Um, all right, yeah, and hopefully, Suit Honcho has been working on that accuracy stuff. That'll be nice. Um, all right, okay, so features, feature, director, model. Iris data. Okay, scikit so learn, pandas, job lib. Very nice, very nice. Text classifier model. One. All right. And then, okay, you check the example, and then you run console test. Nice. Okay. Let's go there. Training and testing more than five percent. Test example. All right, cool. <clears throat> Very nice. Um, yep, and I think uh, we need to install the light GBM in a CI. So yeah. Okay. So I'm failing a test. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. All right. Um, all right, so we can remove this file. So, uh, yeah, we'd only need this file if we were hosting the repo on its own. Um, let's see, license, uh, manifest. Um, let's see. Mm, okay. Uh, wait a minute. So, okay, we're failing. Okay, yeah, let me go look at the CI. In light GBM, uh, yeah. pin depths. Uh, oh, is this because? Uh, okay, this has to do with the requirements pinning. Um, this is interesting. I just set this up recently. Um, so when we go to do the release, um, which I have found a way to, around all of the compliance stuff that I need to do, so I'm going to do that um, very soon here. Um, 
uh, when we go to do the release, we need to pin all the versions of everything. And so what's happening here is the there's a test for the version pinning. Um, and that version pinning, um, the version pinning test is looking at an old version of the, it basically pulls down the logs um, and then it yeah, pulls down the logs and it checks that the, that what the versions that got installed in the logs are, um, which is, let's see. Yeah, it does it way at the top, but basically it scrapes it all out and then it comes and it figures out what the requirements TXT would be if the version was pinned um, to what the tests for um, the, the, the main package would be when they're all installed um, because we have to find the versions that work, all of the versions that work together to be able to pin them. Um, so it looks like we're going to need to update that test. Um, how we're going to need to deal with that. That's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, because this is going to fail every time we add a new plugin now. Um, which is going to be annoying. Let's see. We'll have to deal with this. We need to open a new issue for this one. Um, for now, we'll just update the logs. Um, but, hmm. yeah, I don't know what we're going to do about that. We'll, we'll figure it out. So, let's, uh, and this is, oops. Alright, so CI, or what is this? More descriptive. Uh, test service dev pin tips. Uh, fails when new plugin. Added. All right, and so the reason why was uh, test uh, current test um, uses a uh, old version or uses a specific version of logs of uh, a previous test runs logs. Um, uh, that test run doesn't contain uh, the installed dependency um, when a pull request is, is adding a new dependency. All right, okay, so we'll have to figure this out, but we will just, uh, let's see. I guess for now, we can just see what else we have here. Okay, yeah, did, did it screw up Windows and Mac OS? All right. Um, I will do this. I will merge this and update it at the same time. Um, so, <laughs> which will be right after this meeting. So um, let me just make a note of that. Uh, oh, and then we need to remove that file. So, uh, before merge, uh, John will update with um, update pin tips test. Sweet. Um, let me just make sure we have notes on that. All right, so added uh, light. What was it? G. LGBM aggressor classifier. All right. <clears throat> and then anything else you wanted to talk about, Natasha? Yeah, and actually, I don't. I want. I won't able to run a docs .sh. There, there's just some error while uh, I'm going to run a script 
docs.sh i'm not able to uh, see the documentation hmm. locally can you uh, show us what's going on yeah sure yeah that that's a weird weird error i was trying to do the same thing last week and yeah it it just says that the file doesn't exist for some reason weird no some there is some kind of syntax error in my case i don't know why a syntax error yep is it visible huh let's see yep yep wow okay this is yes. odd uh, a kind of syntax async equals this is really odd um my guess is I guess is the Python version issue. Um, so can you just let's just look at docs.sh real quick here. So oh. or can we can we just look at the um, look at that script slash docs.sh file? And just open okay. that real quick. So Python three point seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. So my guess is that. All right. So you want to flip back to the error message. So we're running Python three point seven. Um. So let's see. Python three dist p expect invalid syntax. Uh, it's mad about that p expect p expect library python 3 async equals oh it's because async became a keyword so this is a package that works for python 3.6 and is okay so this it's got installed by your um all right so dist packages is usually used by um, like if you do an applicant install or something then it might put it in there um, rather than site packages um, it's my understanding at least um, and so this is probably something because the system version Ubuntu's version of Python is probably 3.6 and so they installed this pexpect which isn't compatible with 3.7 because async is becomes a keyword um, and so when they have async equals false that that obviously you can't you can't say that if async is a keyword. Um, couldn't say like if equals false, right? Um, so um, so you're gonna need to you need to get it. I think there should be some way to make Python not use disk packages. Let's see, Python do not search. I mean, the, the most immediate way to solve this problem is you remove that package. Um, the problem with that is that that may break other things on your system. Um, why? That's. Let's see if we can find it. So, p expect. Uh, it's the problem with this package, really. Um, <clears throat> So let's see. Uh, all right, I'm not seeing an issue here. The async keyword in their issue tracker. All right, so some they broke px. That's funny, I'm not seeing an issue here about there. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, looks like they say Python 3. All right, I'm just checking the, the library itself if you want to if you want to see what I'm doing you can also present as well. Um, okay. Let's see. So I'm just trying to figure out um, 
you know, if there's maybe a newer version that, that already fixes this, because um, then we can have that, we can solve that by just doing installing the latest version. So, um, uh, let's see. Have you shared your screen? I think it's not uh, visible to oh, me right now. Thanks. Yeah, I forgot to hit the next dialog there. Yeah. All right, it looks like they have updated it to the point where now it's async is <laughs> with an underscore everywhere. So, um, yeah, so they made it with an underscore. So the question is, is that in the last release? Um, and if it is, can you just install that one? Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Because uh, if you can just install the release, then you're done. Uh, 0.8. Um, all right, so let's jump back to your uh, terminal here and see. I think because I think we should just be able to install a new version of this library, um, this p expect, and and solve your problem here. Um, I'm sharing my screen. Say, trying to figure out how we would install to this disk packages. Um, all right, okay. <clears throat> let's let's first uh, let's first back this thing up. Um, yeah, so let's let's create a copy of that p expect and just like cp dash r that um, user lib python three disk packages p expect cp dash r um, yeah, so do cp dash r and then user lib python3 disk packages p expect. And then just copy it to like, I don't know, some, somewhere where, somewhere where, um, you can keep it safe, um, for a second here. So <laughs> you can put it in your downloads, the, the whole directory. So p expect the directory, not just that file. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can put it in downloads or something. Um, you call it like p expect old because you're going to download a new version. Mm -hmm. You want tilde? Yeah, yeah I mean... tilde slash. Yeah, there you go. Yes. All right. Um, sweet. All right. So now let's download. Do. Uh, um, um yeah you can yeah do pip download um you can do pip download p expect pip download p expect p uh, that I, think, one, I, think. Uh, I think you need an e in front of uh yeah there you go i think that's it All right, sweet. So let's see, Pi 2, Pi 3, great. Okay, so now we want to install this thing um, into uh, into your disk packages directory. And now the problem is, from what I understand, so we can try just installing it, but um, we risk the chance that it sounds like the internet says that it may or may not be configured to install into disk packages. It may go to site packages like we were talking about. Um, it's supposed to go to site packages, but some people say it ends up in disk packages. But to circumvent that whole thing, we are just going to install it to a prefix and then copy the and then replace the directories in disk packages. So basically, we'll um, if you do mktemp 
uh, mktemp-d, uh, all one word. So no space okay. in between mk and temp. Yeah. Okay, temp-d, that'll give you a temporary directory. Um, so hit enter. Uh, do I need to hit oh, enter? Oh, yeah, hit enter, yeah. Yep. All right, so now you can do pip install, um, and then, uh, well, I guess we didn't really need to download it first, but you can do pip install hyphen hyphen prefix equals, and then that temporary directory. And then you can do um, um, the p expect. I'm realizing now that we didn't really need to download it first. But, right? Yeah. All right, so now it should. Okay. Is it really going to install it there? God damn it. Okay, yeah, it's trying to say that it's already. So we have, yeah, and that's what's going on. So version 4.2.1 versus 4.8.0. Um, let's see. Um, P expect. I think we can just unzip it. I think you just do unzip p expect. Try just doing unzipped and then p expect whatever dot whl. Here? Yeah. Um, sorry, do p expect. Or, oh, and move that one to p expect dot old or something. Because that's the old version that we're trying to preserve here, that directory that you have there. Is we want to unzip the wheel, and we want to then take the contents that is unzipped, which will be probably a directory named pexpect, and move that into your disk packages directory. Okay. Does so, it make sense why we're doing all this? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Where do I find so I would, P expect? I would do a, do an MV P expect the directory there that just got auto completed to P expect dot old or something because that um, this is your backup essentially if things go go bad. Yep. So yeah. So. so all right. So. Yeah, go go into go into downloads, and then just do mv p expect p expect dot old. And so we copied because this this is the um, so p expect space p expect dot old. We're going to move the p expect to p expect dot old. All right, cool. So yeah, and hit enter. Yeah. So now we've taken, we've copied it from user lib disk packages. We moved it to pexpect.old, and now if we do unzip pexpect hyphen four dot eight pi two wheel um, uh, uh, the wheel. Yeah. Let's see. I think it's a hyphen pexpect hyphen. Yep. Uh, let's see. Let's see, it should be there. Where is it? P expect. No. It says saved P expect. It's weird. Saved P expect. For, uh, can you do it in like an LS? You see the, yeah, Pip says it downloaded them. Um, let's see, P expect. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it probably just doesn't want to auto complete because it's not a zip file. Yeah. Um, just copy that P expect 4.8. Uh, zero dot wheel, and you can just unzip that. It's just a zip file. Um, yep, that one. Yeah. Unzip p. Or you could do star. I think if you just do star, it'll do it. Four star. If you do unzip, yeah, there you go. Yay. All right, um, and then I think you can just uh, replace that directory. Um, let's see. So if you do, so, you know, rmrf no? user, I would just do rmrf, um, you know, the user lib disk packages directory where we found it. If you go up a bunch of times, it'll come up. 
Like if we go to that CP command we had. So, uh, I need to CP. Or, well, don't, don't, let's see. So I was just saying, like, if you go to your history and find that CP command that had the full path that we were looking at. Um, so let's see. Because, yeah, we want to take, we copied yeah. this. So, yeah, so we want to RMRF that directory that we made a backup of and then MVP expect to there. At him. Yeah. And then, yeah. All right, that should be good. Right? Yep, I think so. Oh, oh yeah, permission okay. to sudo. <laughs> yeah, All right, yes, yeah, sudo. <laughs> I just forgot this. Uh. Yep. All right, yeah, and then I would uh, then just do sudo mv p expect and then that path. And you can do, uh, if you do bang, so if you do exclamation point dollar sign, it'll autocomplete, or it'll use the last argument of the last command. Or that. Um, let's see. Yeah, try this and then see what happens. Done. All right, cool. Now, now if you run this Sphinx stuff again, hopefully it doesn't blow up. And hopefully nothing else blows up. That if something on your system stops working now, um, just you know, put put the old PX back, back basically. Look. All right. Uh, okay. Looks like that fixed the issue. I think it's working. All right. Yeah. And my guess is this is something where like the Ubuntu package management has not updated to the latest version of PX back yet. And at some point they will, and that will make this not an issue. But until then, it's an issue. This is weird. I wonder what the deal is there. Let's see. All right, sweet. You should have, yeah, you should have um, uh, the docs built now. Uh, auto regressor. Not found. Docs examples. Auto regressor. Huh? That's weird. Oh, is this a different branch or? Well, we must be on a different branch. We're, good branch. We're on master. Uh oh, does that mean we have an issue? <laughs> it's not good. Um, no, that's that's an older version of DFML. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was going to say, I feel like, yeah, okay, the CI is passing um, with the stuff that we just did. Um, so we should be good. All right, okay, that was, that was um, yeah, it's always tricky when we have. Dependency issues like that are always tricky. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else for the day? Uh, anybody wants to talk about or? Nope. That's it, I think. All right. Uh, from my side. Cool. Well, then I will uh, talk to you guys uh, on Gitter, and I'll talk to you next week. Um, other than that, so. And okay. And no, the, the, the issue about the LG, uh, LGBM. Uh, uh, you 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 are going to solve it, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna do. I'll do them both at the same time. But I I do need you to go remove that uh, testing workflow file, the testing.yaml um, um, that got added there, because we don't need that file. I put it in a comment on the pull request. Um, oh. Okay. And I think other than that, I think we're good to go. Um, oh, yep. and I think this okay. needs to be. Let's see. This needs to be 2020 Intel Cohen and Tesh. Um, all right. Cool. Sweet. All right. Thanks, guys. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. And have a good one. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.